This video illustrates Wireshark's Follow TCP Stream feature. We'll also show how to use that feature to observe a telnet, username, and password exchange. The example capture that we'll use is from wiki.wireshark.org slash sample captures. Here we see the Wireshark packet display. In the top pane, we see the list of packets. Packet number 26 is highlighted. It's the packet with the telnet data we're looking for. I manually searched through the list of packets till I got here. In the center pane is that packet decoded with the identification message of our server. At the bottom is that packet displayed in hexadecimal and ASCII. Notice I've only chosen to expand in the center section the telnet part of the packet. Now we'll move forward to another telnet packet which contains the login prompt from the server. We'll move further through the packet list at other telnet packets and we'll discover that they contain negotiation in the telnet protocol. We're not interested in that, so we'll continue. Finally, we see the first character that the user types in response to the login prompt. <clears throat> this is the character F. Now, we could search through all the packets and find the whole username and password that the user types, but that can be tedious and time-consuming. So instead, we're going to use a feature of Wireshark in the Analyze menu to cause Wireshark to show us both sides of the Telnet communication. Here we move to the Analyze menu. We're going to select Follow and TCP Stream. Now we see a, a window with both sides of the communication. The client to the server is in red and the server to the client is in blue. These colors may be changed by the user in Wireshark's configuration files. You'll notice we see the login message, a group of dots indicating the telnet negotiations, and then the username as entered by the user and echoed by the server. Below that is the password, the prompt provided by the server, the user's response, and you'll notice that it is not echoed by the server. Because the password was correct, we'll see the message of the day that the server provides. Here we click on the login prompt, and it takes us back to the login frame that we looked at earlier. Now we'll see the user type the ls command and that ls command is echoed back to the user by the server. There are no files in this user's home directory, so we see nothing. The dot there is part of the telnet negotiation. Then the user types ls space minus a, and we see the hidden or dot files in the user's home directory. The user then tries to ping www.yahoo.com. That ping is successful, and we see the results below. The user terminates that with a control C and eventually ends the session with exit. At the bottom of the screen, we can select which side of the communication to see if we only wish to see one side. First, we'll take a look at the server to client side. You'll notice it's all blue, no red. That's from the server to the client. Next, we'll look at client to server, which is all red. 
finally will return and see both of them together. In this video, we've looked at Wireshark's follow TCP stream feature and seen how we could use that feature to observe a Telnet username password exchange.